We're going to start at Anderton in Cheshire in the UK, where the Trenton Mersey Canal comes within a few yards of the River Weaver at the heart of the Cheshire salt and chemicals industry. Anderton was the obvious place to transfer goods between the canal and the river because they're so close together. The problem is that the canal is some 15 metres higher than the river. A complex system of chutes, inclined planes and even a railway were built up and down this slope and that's how it was for about a hundred years. Then early in the 1870s the River Weaver Navigation Trustees decided to build a physical link between the two. Their engineer, Edward Leader Williams, who later went on to build the Manchester Ship Canal, came up with the idea of a boat carrying lift. In consultation with Edwin Clark, a prominent civil engineer, they came up with a design that was a daring and magnificent example of the Victorians' love of hydraulics and cast iron. Opened in 1875, it was hailed as a marvel of its time and went on to become the prototype for a number of similar but larger lifts in France and Belgium, more of which we shall see later. The upper level of the lift was connected to the Trenton Mersey Canal by a wrought iron aqueduct almost 50 metres long. The operating mechanism was quite simple. The lift consisted of two exactly similar wrought iron tanks or caissons, each measuring 23 metres long by nearly 5 metres wide and they were over a metre and a half deep. Filled with water, each tank weighed about 240 tonnes and could carry either two narrowboats or one barge. The tanks would weigh the same, whether or not they contained a boat, because as the boat entered the tank, it displaced its own weight in water back into the river or back into the canal. It's called Archimedes' principle. The tanks were supported on water-operated hydraulic pistons nearly a metre in diameter that were connected by a 12.5 centimetre diameter pipe so that the two tanks counterbalanced each other. Movement was started by siphoning about 15 centimetres of water out of the lower tank, making it lighter. Because the two hydraulic cylinders were connected, the heavier top tank moved down forcing water into the other cylinder and raising the lower tank. A steam-driven hydraulic pump supplied the small amount of additional energy required to effect a reasonably rapid movement and to enable the tanks to be precisely levelled at the end of their journey. The tanks were sealed off from the canal above and the river below by heavy guillotine gates made watertight by a complicated system of wedges. On reaching the upper level, the tanks were connected to the trough of the approach aqueduct and the back gates opened. When opened, the lift opened up trade between the potteries on the Trenton Mersey Canal and the River Weaver and hence Liverpool and the flourishing export market. All went well for the first ten years or so and then serious pitting and grooving was noticed in the cylinders and pistons. Investigation showed that the river water used in the hydraulics was contaminated with chemicals and salt and was in fact corrosive. It was immediately changed to condensate from the steam engine, but serious damage had already been done. By 1906 the situation had become so bad that the trustees gave the order for a new lift to be constructed, again to a design by their resident engineer, a man called Sena. Sainer's idea was to build the new lift over the top of the original Victorian structure, utilising the original front and rear columns and keeping intact the upper aqueduct to the canal. The new main structure comprised tubular columns made up of lengths of cast iron short enough to be easily transported to the site, then bolted together to form the framework of the new lift. The top of the framework formed a platform on which was located a system of shafts, pulleys and gears which was the new operating mechanism. 